It's time for Kicking It With The Mythwits, the show dedicated to talking about awesome crowdsourcing projects. Every episode, we interview amazing creators and showcase their work. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and I am joined by my co-host, <laughs> co-host, there you go, Juan, my co-host, Mike Kafis. Uh, hello. <laughs> On this episode of Kicking It With The Mythwits, we are talking with comic book artist and creator, Ben Bishop. Hello there. Thanks for having me for my fourth time, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. So. Welcome think so. back, Ben. Yeah, man. Pretty we good. love having Ben on. Uh, Ben's new newest Kickstarter is Nathan the Caveman, and we're gonna we're gonna talk all about uh, his his Kickstarter in just one second. Um, I just want to say, you know, Ben was on. Ben has been on a couple times. Originally, the first time you came on, we talked about Nathan the Caveman some. Uh, did we? And then, yeah, yeah, we did. It came up because we had you on. It was before you. It's before you became a big star in the TMNT oh. world. <laughs> oh hush. <laughs> and then um, making and me then, green. And then yeah, and then you <laughs> came on and, and we talked about. Jeez, uh, what was it? I know we've talked about uh, drawing blood and we talked about. Oh, we talked about the aggregate, of course. Um, yes, the aggregate. That's mm-hmm. it, Mike. Right there. Yes. Um, yeah, so so yeah. we got we got a, a new Kickstarter and it's and it's of a, a revised project. I, I if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm trying to share the link, but I might as well tell you about this thing. Okay. Um, so this is what we keep mentioning, NathanTheCaveman.com. Um, but I think that this maybe was the cover when we were talking about it. Nice. Actually, yeah. see on my back wall there. That's the original drawing for that cover there. Oh, cool. Okay. This is my. This is my home studio where I have a small portion of toys and a lot of dirty laundry. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> Nathan the Caveman here uh, was my very first graphic novel um, ever, pretty much. I did one in high school before this called Repetition to Remember as like a senior project, which was 75 pages. Um, I love story because I was in an emo band. And, um, but this one is also a love story, but it's 300 pages. Um, it's about the very first artist ever, this cave painter and a modern day painter named Nathan, who lives in Portland, Maine, and um, shows his artwork at the Portland Museum of Art. And what happens throughout the story is their stories kind of go back and forth, and you see these reflections of the past and the present and history kind of repeating itself. Um, And the whole idea is that um, hopefully Nathan and his new love, Adriana, can recognize kind of those patterns in the artwork so that they don't just keep repeating themselves and end up exactly the same way. Um, the caveman ended up, which I'll show you, is dead and buried with his girl there in uh-huh. the Sistine Chapel of the most cave paintings ever found. Um, so the whole idea came from, I moved to uh, Maine in 2004 to go to Maine College of Art and become a, a real life illustrator. Because um, I was told, you know, if you want a job, you go to college. So I found the college to go to for this job. Um, and in my first year of art history class, we were down in the Portland Museum of Art and the teacher was going through slides of everything we were gonna learn about that year. And when she got to cave painting, she said, cave painting is the first form of art and we have no idea why they did it. And then she just clicked the button and moved on. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And like, I'd never cared about cave painting. I don't care about cavemen. Um, I actually used to have this really stupid list when I was 18 of shit I didn't like. And it was like pirates, bricks, and cavemen and then i moved to portland maine and it's like it's like all that shit. uh i don't know i had like a likes and dislikes thing uh but anyway i and then i think twins were on there and then i ended up doing a book about twins too i don't know uh, but anyway so i started thinking about it and i was like it's like i'm never gonna you know figure out why cavemen painted on walls and what i mean by that is like you know why certain cavemen locked themselves away and were being all artsy fartsy while there were other ones out there actually doing the things that they were painting about, like inventing fire and the wheel and whatever going on the great hunt. Um, And so I said, I'm never going to figure it out officially because there's people who have been researching this stuff forever. And I'm just an 18 year old in our history class. Um, And so the more and more I thought about it, I thought it was probably an obvious answer. And so I thought about myself and why do I make art? And for me, I was four years old, drawing all day, and I said, this is all I ever wanted to do. And then when I was 11, I said, all I ever want to do is draw all day, but I want to tell stories with those drawings. And then since then, many things have happened along the way that have tried to stop me from doing that. For example, my second year of art school, I got called down to the office and they said, you can't go to school here anymore. 
Mm. And I was like, what? I moved to Portland, Maine to go to art school. Why can't I go to school? And I just couldn't afford it. And my parents weren't able to co-sign. And Hmm. and so like that morning I was in school and that afternoon I wasn't. And so that's when I kind of had this realization. I said, well, if I want to just make, if I want to make comics, why don't I just fucking make comics? Mm -hmm. And so that's when I thought back to that idea I had um, about a year earlier in art history class uh, about this caveman and the first the first first artist ever and a modern day painter and why they do what they do which all boils down to love and the fact that they have to so that was the real answer it was like there's certain people that have to do certain things some of them are artists some of them are musicians some of them right. uh, write poetry some of them play video games some of them do podcasts like people yeah. need to express themselves you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah um, i do <laughs> so, oh, i do <laughs> <laughs> you need that and so yeah. I made a 300 page uh, graphic novel about that. It took four years, the four years that I would have been in school. Um, I spent doing this. And then when the book came out, it led to all these other great opportunities. You know, uh, book I did after it was Lost Trail, which is a famous main story that's now read in main uh, fourth grade classrooms. I actually have a school tomorrow that I'm going to all day to talk to fourth graders about the book. And then obviously that led to other projects and allowed me to do things like the aggregate and then allowed me to get into Ninja Turtles and things like that. So it's all like, I want to make these t-shirts that just say, just make comics. Cause it's like, if you want to yeah. do it, just do it. There's people who say I'm a writer and it's like, well, did you write anything? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, you could be a writer, but you have to write one thing. <laughs> yeah, to write something to be a writer. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. So anyway, that's the whole book. Yeah, I, I tell you, going back to that that theme of you know you have it has to be in you and and, and you you know you have to have that burning desire to do things, uh, or, or we all do. We all have some kind of burning desire that we that we want to do, and some people stifle it, which is sad, and and others pursue it. Um, but you know that the, from a game designer's because I also do some game design stuff. Um, you yeah. know when. when when you want to be a game designer, it's the same thing as I'm, I'm sure as wanting to be a comic book artist. You have to be able to. You have to not be able to walk away from it. In other words, you yeah. there because there have been times where I've like I want to do this, um, but uh, you know I'm like but I but I don't have time. I can't do it, and I walk away from it. And then all I do is think about it and write notes about it and like like oh yeah if I ever get back to it I'll I'll do this thing and then I'm like oh I I can't not do it I just I can't not do it you know yeah. it drives you crazy and you have to do it it eats at you and it's like it's like when in movies when they're like showing ghosts and they're like he's got unfinished business he can't leave it's like I always think about that but like I'm still alive it's like right. <laughs> I've got something I need to be doing that I'm not doing. Um, yeah, and you just the self guilt is too strong. <laughs> right. So, and I've and I've told people that if you uh, if you can walk away from it, like if if for for example for game design, because that's that's sort of one of the things that I do that's very difficult uh, to to do. I was like, if you can walk away from it, then you then you probably should because you're not going to have the fortitude to stick with it. You know, um, that's, yeah, but that's but if you point. find that if you find that you cannot walk away from it, that's when you're ready because that's what you're yeah. going to need to do it. And I would imagine being a comic book artist has to be right up there. Yeah. Well, especially if you're self-employed like me, you have to be your own terrible, you know, whip cracking boss and force yourself to do it. Like I'm tired almost all the time. It would be awesome to just lay down and watch Netflix or something, but <laughs> right. I have to like, I have to put it off as long as possible, even like lunch and stuff, which is probably why I'm so skinny. I'm like, I'm not going to eat until I finish this page and I like oh. force myself uh, I'm at the studio with a couple different guys and I was there with this guy, Dylan Andrews the other day. And, and he was like, what's wrong with you? You're like dancing around while you're drawing. And I was like, I got a pee. He's like, so go pee. I said, not yet. I haven't heard it. Like, so, like, so, so, like, like, these milestones, like these rewards, like now you're allowed to urinate. Uh, you are a slave <laughs> driver, man. You reward yeah. yourself by letting yourself yeah. pee. It's a good thing. Yes. I'm my only employee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Cause the other employees would hate you. <laughs> yeah. yeah they wouldn't stand for not me. get a job with Ben. All right. So <laughs> I do have a question though. And this, uh, plays to creatives and what a lot of people think, um, especially for artists and for people who are talented songwriters and, um, and singers. And that is that a lot of people say, Oh, you have a gift. Oh, you know, you're so, you're so talented. Now, it, it is okay to say someone's talented or that, that you are a f fond of someone's work. But I find a lot of people t will say that uh, it's almost giving 
talent or giving agency to something that doesn't exist as opposed to, you know what? I work my ass off to get to where I am. I do this sure. every day. And it sounds like you're you're kind of on that thing where you're like, I, I, I draw every day. I, I work hard yeah. every day to get to where I am and get what I what is important and, and meaningful to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't diminish it when people say like, oh, you have such a talent stuff, because I, I guess you had to have that like to become interested in it to begin with, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I would say like like I, people ask, like, they'll be there with their sons or uh, daughters at conventions and stuff who are drawing and they'll have their drawings there. And it's really cool. But they'll be like, so what kind of advice would you give? And I'm like, there's no other advice as, and, except for like, just do it, like draw yeah. all day like every ounce of the day, my biggest piece of real advice that doesn't sound like I'm just blowing them off is like, if hands are hard, draw hands until they're not hard. If which is basically the same advice I just said. So it's like, I'm not good at backgrounds. It's like, well, draw backgrounds until you're good at backgrounds and mm -hmm. then pick your next thing that you suck at. Like, so it is a lot of hard work. Um, but I guess you do have to have the talent to begin with like a little ounce of it, but no one's really born with the talent. I don't think like, it's just hours and hours. Um, think anyone could do it there's there's a certain point where you're probably like i don't want to say too old but maybe you've spent so much time that you won't have enough of that those hours to yeah. then catch up which is part of the reason i try not to stop it's because i'm like oh every time i stop i'm a day behind everyone who didn't stop right. you're, um, you're, a, you're a p behind yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's like damn it that was like a 40 second p um, right <laughs> keep a bottle by the desk dude <laughs> yeah, there's actually a really cool line. I don't know if it's okay to say that something I wrote is really cool, but something I really like that I wrote in the aggregate. Um, she's like, she's been alive for a thousand years, and she says something about like how good she's gotten at painting, like out of everything. Like she's obviously gotten really good at fighting. She's gotten good at like reading people and surviving. But she also mentions like she's gotten so good at painting because it's just amazing. Like. Like we all only have ever seen how good people get up to like maybe 80 or something, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. imagine if you didn't become like frail and tired and, and you could live for like a thousand years. Like what would those paintings even actually look like? Altered carbon. Pretty crazy. Talk. I haven't watched that yet. Is that what the show's about? Yeah, well, you'd it. appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it, it is, it's, it does touch on the themes of, of mortality and stuff. So, I mean, that's not like a that's spoiler. Cool. That's, that's, I mean, that's no, no, like I was more central like to the story. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, they stole your idea. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it was. Well, it, all it I know is, the credits. <laughs> I, all I know is I could draw, I could practice drawing for a hundred years and I could still just be, maybe come away with a mediocre stick figure. So uh, to that, to that end, I do appreciate your art. So. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. So yeah, this book, uh, I talked about like what it is and how it came about and stuff, but as Pete mentioned in the beginning, it's back. Um, I published it, self-published it, my very first self-published book 10 years ago, 2008. So this is the anniversary. This is actually like the exact same time. Um, it's like just a few days until it really came out. I was ordering the book right now um, for my first print run, which was 100 copies um, back in 2008, 10 years ago. Um, and so right now on Kickstarter, NathanTheCaveman.com, I have a 10-year anniversary edition that um, the initial goal was 3000 to reprint it with higher quality printers, um, you know, fix some of the problems with the book. Like there's little, you probably won't be able to pick it up on the camera, but I didn't know back then that there's two different types of blacks. There's a CMYK black and then there's like an RGB black. And so they're just different. And so like little things like that, I'm not going to George Lucas the book or anything and redo parts of it, but I want it to be on my, <laughs> the best materials. <laughs> yes. Nathan always shot first. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want it to be on the best materials, uh, new cover. And then there's going to be, it looks like 10 extra pages of, um, behind the scenes making of con content in the back. I kept everything. I was working at a coffee shop when I was kind of laying out this book. And so everything is like on the receipt paper. I laid out all the pages on like receipt paper to nice. say like Japanese cap stuff. So it, it'll be fun to put those making of pages together. Um, so we had a $3,000 goal and we got to 6,000 in the first day. And now we're up to 11,000 um, and there's only eight days left um and so we've unlocked a ton of stretch goals so now even if you go to the page and just grab the 20 dollars reward um because of all the stretch goals and because of everyone you know going above and beyond the goal you'll also get a sticker a print um what else 
uh, issue zero of the aggregate, which was limited to a thousand copies, like a prequel to my other oh. book, the aggregate. Hold on, I tell you what, why don't um, I let me pull it up? Um, in yeah, this, four we, bookmarks. Stall. I, I, I'm on two different computers, so let's stall so I can bring it up on the next one. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, I, you know, sure. the stickers. So for the aggregate, that came with stickers and bookmarks and stuff, and they oh, were yeah. they were really cool. It was very good quality. Um, you know, I, I didn't I didn't even use the yeah. stickers because I, I don't want to like I don't want to use them yet because like because like you pull a sticker off and you stick it on something and, and now you know like if that thing disappears or it goes somewhere or whatever you don't have the sticker anymore. Um, I, I, I yeah. thought my daughter would really I... like it because she's way into cats and they're like spider cats, but she's really way not into spiders. So the, the spider <laughs> cat freaked her out. <laughs> That's happened. I've had that conversation with many people where they're like, I love it because of the cat, but I don't want it because of the spider. Right. <laughs> but then there's other people who other people who want it because of the combination, which is cool. Right. Um, so we unlocked all that extra stuff. So you get more bang for your buck um, just by being part of the Kickstarter in these first 30 days. The other huge thing that we unlocked, it was basically the biggest stretch goal that I wanted to hit. Um, was the Kevin Eastman variant cover. So now that I'm good buds with Kevin Eastman, the co-creator of the Ninja Turtles, um, he's a huge fan of self-publishing, obviously. We wouldn't have the Ninja Turtles if he didn't believe in self-publishing with Peter Laird. Um, and so he just thinks that this is awesome, and he offered um, to do a variant cover for it. So his, you can see the rough um, drawing for his cover up there on the page. And Pete, I'm sharing it, just so you know. I got it. Yep, I'm, I got it. And that's um, that's a cover exclusive version that you can only get through the Kickstarter. It kills me to not like print extra and sell it for the rest of my life, but I wanted it to be exclusive to people who came to bat uh, these first thirty days. So yeah, nice. Hey, what does what does Kevin Eastman Don't think of, uh, of of independent podcasters and like coming on their podcast? What, what do you think he thinks of that? <laughs> I'm sure he thinks you're awesome because you're making your own way. Yeah. <laughs> think you'd want to come on and tell us that <laughs> so, all right it's uh, serious dollars or more and you get a book and a shirt i see yeah nice yeah sure. I, was, I was doing the adrian thing sorry yeah <laughs> so with uh, oh book and a shirt and so what's what's the shirt um what what does the shirt look like i got it here hold on oh sweet oh he's gonna show us the shirt so these two are from the original ones I printed 10 years ago, and I've never been worn, and I've been carrying around them in my closet because they're extra larges. Oh, but nice. Like this. So these I actually hand screen printed myself. Um, I might not do that for the new ones, but <laughs> there'll be a, a wide array of colors and stuff, but I think I want to keep that design. I really like that design. That is cool. Uh, huh. Yeah. Not so very artsy. <laughs> We're getting a little choppy here. I don't know if it's me or you guys. It's probably just my crappy main internet, but it's a tiny bit. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. We yep. can still hear you. We yeah. We're good. Yeah. Cool. All right, so let's let's go back, Mike. Uh, where are we now? So pledge sixty dollars or more. You'll have to read it. I can't. I can't read and, it through oh, your. Well, and you get a book with a cave painting. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So those like. I thought that was going to be the most popular reward ever. I may just not have explained it well, but I'm literally going to put paint on my hands and take like a nice piece of watercolor paper and finger paint original artwork and then put those with the book. And I thought that would be really that cool. Actually, that is badass. Now, are you talking about, paints with their so hands there's, yeah, uh, there's plenty of room to get in on that. Uh, uh, 98 yeah. left, but <laughs> are you, are you saying that everyone will be different? Oh yeah, so the cave painting one, those will all be different. Yeah, maybe I didn't write it right. They're not prints; they'll be originals. And so yeah. I'll draw so, something. So everyone should know that for sure that you will get your own tailor-made finger paint. That's right. Ben Bishop fingers painted. I don't know. If, I honestly don't know if if people are 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 following you properly or not. But you know, Ben has he's he's a hard worker and he and he's. I mean, you're coming up in the comics world. You're you're making all the right moves. Um, he could could possibly be very super famous one day. And imagine if <laughs> no, but I'm serious. Imagine if you had right now, if you had a Jim Lee original hand painted, hand -painted like art piece of artwork, what that would be worth, right? 
You could right. be getting it right now for less than sixty bucks. Because the sixty bucks, I mean, that gets you all the other stuff too, right? Yeah, sixty dollars, you could even get to into a con and get Ben to sign it later. Right, you couldn't exactly. even do that. <laughs> See. Um. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe it's a good time to tell you what I got going on now. I don't know if you saw my post, um, but just a few days ago at North Carolina Comic Con, I was on a panel with Kevin Eastman, so I'll back up a little bit. Um, I'm doing a book with Kevin Eastman now called Drawing Blood. We kickstarted that one, too. We got 100,000. Um, it's written by David Avalone, um, drawn by me, and some sequences by Troy Little. Um and Kevin is doing some flashback stuff. So now because of that, I got that because of aggregate, I got aggregate because of Nathan the Caveman. So it's all this big spiral. But because of that book and our friendship that's evolved um, with me and Kevin, I'm going to be doing uh, officially the Ninja Turtle books. Um, did you see that? I did, Online. I did. Yeah, I so. Think I did. All right, so now I do remember hearing that. Yeah, because... so that's pretty exciting because I've been doing covers since 2004, 2014 but i've been dying to get like on the insides of the books and um kevin has asked me to work on this story that we can't really talk about it's called target r uh, i'll let you know or i'll uh, let you guess what the r stands for um or which turtle the r stands for uh, but uh it's gonna be a really cool story fantastic so that's what i'm saying i mean he you know ben is an official teenage mutant ninja turtle uh, comic book artist um and and it's <laughs> I'm just saying, might be a good time to get a nice original piece of artwork for peanuts. <laughs> you know, peanuts. yeah, that's true. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I'm like, I'm super happy. Well, obviously, congratulations on that for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm very happy with how the Kickstarter's gone. Of course, like, I have no disappointments at all. We've exceeded the goal. Now I'm just hoping to beat oh. out some of these other stretch goals we've got a hardcover edition that we can unlock uh i'm trying to find where that is what number okay, that's so, at. right just so just people so people everyone knows you are uh eight days to go uh mm -hmm. yes you've you if if anyone bids now you're definitely getting whatever you get because yeah. um whatever you're bidding on because you've um you've already well surpassed um four times over or almost yeah. four times over what you're uh pledge goal was so congratulations on that as well thanks thanks yeah so the next goal is hit twelve thousand, um which is less than a thousand away now um and i'll add another five pages of making of content but then the real big one now after the kevin eastman cover has been unlocked the big one now is um, to unlock a hardcover edition which is kind of what i wanted to do from the start with this 10-year anniversary thing but hardcovers are so expensive i always say no i'll never do it they increase the cost of shipping, they increase the cost of printing, they're heavier to bring to shows, they damage easier at shows. And so I had to get to a point where I was like, okay, it's a big number we'll have to hit, but if we do, it's gonna look very damn classy. So Eastman, if we- Is Eastman, um, th this cover, does he sign it or is it hand signed by any chance? I could probably help you get it signed if we were at the same show together, but right. I can't promise the signatures because if I did, then we'd get like 400 orders and then he yeah, wouldn't yeah. be my friend yeah, anymore. No, yeah. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk <laughs> off camera. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at... It'll be signed by me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Definitely. But well, uh, not, yeah, no. like, not only that, but you got to think of the logistics of it. He has to get all, he'd have to get all those books to Eastman and then Eastman would have to sign them and then get them back to him so then no, he no, could no. get them no, to no, the no, shippers. No, and, no, no. no. What? Yeah, one book. One, one book. book. <laughs> oh, one. Just, just, just one of them. One I got you. So I'm tracking. I'm tracking. We'll, we'll talk. But <laughs> right, right. No, I Ben. I always gotta throw uh, money at Ben's project. So I think I'm gonna probably go with the uh, variant cover one. So thank you. Yeah, you got four. You'll have forty bucks coming your way soon. Thanks, Ben. Dude. You should I have free piece. Of... New. Yeah. I forgot. I had something else new. What's, What's, that? Up? What's yeah. up? What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, well, actually, April April fourth. Um, Savage Dragon issue 233. I did a seven page backup story in that. Oh, um, shit. Now you're talking Pete's language. Yes, Pete, it's pretty Pete loves awesome. him some Savage Dragon. Dude, yeah, so I let have, me tell you about it a little. I have what like the say? first hundred issues of Savage Dragon, and wow. I, I think it was I think it was the hundredth issue where he sort of changed his style up. He went more of um a traditional, you know, he put in the, the thought boxes and thought bubbles and stuff, which Dragon hadn't had, and he'd shortened up his schedule. He was doing more every every um, every month, 
And I kind of was like, oh, I don't know if I really care for Dragon as much anymore. And I kind of drifted away from it. But goddamn, those first, like the first, I think it was like the first hundred issues, Savage Dragon was my joint. He was my favorite superhero. I thought he was the yeah. bomb. Because it was just crazy yeah. the shit he would do. And like, it was hilarious. I'd be reading that thing and cracking up. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, yeah, yeah you got been, seven pages? Uh, I've been reading Savage Dragon, obviously, since I was a kid, too. And all the image stuff. Um, then like totally changed my whole life and probably was part of the reason why I wanted to make comics so badly. Um, but because of the turtle stuff and the covers and, and things, I met um, Frank Fosco who did um, the interiors and stuff for when image had the turtles and they were super crazy. Like uh, Donnie was a robot. Um, Raph wore Casey's mask and it was just nuts. It was, it was everything you'd expect from image if they had the turtles. Um, and so because of that, he was like, oh, I'm friends with Eric Larson and we're doing Savage Dragon. Would you want to do that? And I was like, yeah, of course. And so he <laughs> hooked us up. And then Eric um, Eric wrote me an email that was like, okay, well, what do you want to draw about? He's like, I like to cater the uh, backup stories to be, you know, just the most fun stuff that you want to draw. So I was like, all right. And so I told him um, I love to do redesigns. So I would like to redesign Savage Dragon. So I said, maybe like an evil version of Savage Dragon or something. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. If you can see that at all. Oh, nice. yeah. Look at that. Nice. So that's my, oh, you just made Pete's that's, day. Um, and so then I also said, and maybe it's in like this crazy future and it's like a Mobius city thing. Because I don't, I don't mind cities, but I, I prefer to make up a city instead yeah. of like drawing a city that's supposed to be a certain place. Um, and then the other thing that happened was I was like, so I've got this character that I created when I was 11 <laughs> called Switchblade. Um, and he's he's exactly what you would think. He's just. Uh oh. Uh, we lost him. We lost Ben. He'll be back. Uh -oh. He'll be back. He'll jump so... back in in a second. I, <laughs> I said of something. <laughs> While we're waiting for Ben, let me just say, because I know he'll be too, uh, she may be too embarrassed, but the last and final stretch goal yeah. uh, is, or not stretch goal, but the last and final, the best pledge that you could ever have is by pledging $10,000, basically you will get all true uh, the uh, original pages of uh, the artwork for, for uh, Nathan the Caveman. So, you know, if you're if you're one of your, you know, you're a high baller out there and you're thinking or looking for a good investment, again, the original artwork to the book that is kickstarted in 20 or 30 years would, uh, you know, uh, what would uh, a fi all the original printings of an uh, plates of a comic that Stan Lee did? Again, we should think about it like that. Right, Pete? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying, I'm trying to get Ben back in. If, if he has any problems, I'm just yeah. letting him know. He can just click the link again. But yeah, certainly. No, seriously. If you could have, imagine uh, you could go back in time. So we're not going to say Spider-Man or Superman because, I mean, those are super, super, super iconic. But let's say uh, we're talking like when Jim Lee uh, came out with the first like Wildstorm, right? And I think it was Jim Lee did Wildstorm. But anyway, let's say the first Wildstorm. And you could have the first couple of pages of the original Wildstorm. Dude, be, each one of them be worth ten thousand dollars, I guess. Yeah. I would think, right? I mean, the ones that were hand drawn by him. I would that say would, so. I would say so. Hey, so so anyway, so we've. Um, I'm hoping Ben will come back in. You know, there and, is the possibility. The other, there. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The only other thing I was going to say. Come back. He's, he's coming. Yeah, he's back. coming. The okay. only other thing I will say is, uh, if you were thinking that, uh, if you wanted to get your money's worth. Uh, I think it's another forty dollar pledge level that he will throw in an aggregate, if I'm not mistaken, right? That yes. uh, assigned a numbered version of the aggregate for forty dollars. So if you're like, uh, I don't know, Eastman is okay, but you know, you're like, Eastman. well, I'll get the caveman, and you know, I want more for my money. Uh, since I already have the aggregate, I know I'm going for the variant cover, but someone else may want to go for, um, you know, getting the aggregate because that again is a good read as well, multiple times. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's a split decision comic. So it's got four beginnings, seven endings, 20 choices in between. So you can reread the same book like 18 yeah. different times. Yeah. I'm yeah, back good. now. How's yeah, I know. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we're, hey, hey, while you were gone, I was pimping the $10,000 level. Just, you know. Yeah. Just so yeah. You know. I mean, again, that's, that's a killer deal. Yeah. There's only one left. 
<laughs> well, it's every single page. Right. I want, <laughs> I want them to all go to the same place. I think it breaks down at like 40 bucks a page, which is. Wow. So wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. So, so, 10, so for 10,000, you get, you get the whole book, all the original pages. Every single page. Yep. Nice. It's six, six, four, six portfolio books, like the 11 by 17. How, how much for uh, the original receipt paper? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to sell those. Ah, come on. <laughs> Do you actually have those? Oh yeah, I've oh. got everything. I have awesome. this big binder full of stuff. I used That's to keep good. everything. Wow. That's good. Now I'm just like, I'll draw something new. It'll be better. And I, throw it. <laughs> I don't throw anything out, but I, I sell everything now. Right. Um, well, then, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. It'll I be mean... cool. Wait till I sell those turtle pages. Uh -huh. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, because you work I for Ben. Someone... You work. You work for Ben Bishop, and I hear he's a real slave driver. Yeah. So you know, you got to get what you can out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone who might be in the market for those uh, Savage Dragons. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've if got. I can uh, those. They're on my wall right here. I can't take them down. But there's uh, seven of them. So yeah, April fourth, issue two thirty three. Um, the cover is one of the really controversial ones that Larson was posting recently um, where Savage Dragon has his wife on his shoulder. You'll know it when you see it. Right. <laughs> Savage Dragon. April 4th, two, eight, that's, issue that's 233. You heard Dude, it here yeah. first, folks. I, I got to, you know, there was an issue of Savage Dragon. I don't want to go too long on this because this is your Kickstarter and everything, but there was an issue of Savage Dragon where, uh, or it might have been a couple of them, where they bring in, uh, he did his own version of Hercules and it or no, it was Thor. I'm sorry. They, I think I had both Hercules and Thor, but they had Thor, and Thor was badass. I mean, he was just like, like he he took the enemy out, and he's like, he's like, and now I shall slay my, you know, I'll shall, I shall slay him. He's like, you know, you can't do that. He just, you know, and he was like, because he was like a Viking warrior, and he's like, oh, then I'll take their women. He's like, no, you can't take their women. I was like, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah, it's a it's it's an awesome book because Eric's been doing it so long, and he's just like. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> like I started this company. Right. It's my book. I've drawn every single page of every single issue minus the backups. And then um, he just does what he wants. So it, it can get pretty adult, but it's like families and stuff ask for the, the ratings. So mm -hmm. he, he provides them. He tells you it's a mature comic. Yeah. If comic stores put it on the, my little pony shelf. That's on them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. absolutely. All right, well, good deal. Um, yeah. I, I, unless there's anything else, I would say I say good show, good show, Ben. Yes, good show, good show. Sorry, Don't, I cut out there for a sec. No, okay. I, I'm glad problem. you picked up the slack, Mike. I, that's I'm, what we I'm do. Only, I'm only here to help. I, I really got to pee though. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> you've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, excellent. So go check out Nathan the Caveman. Now I I saw in the chat room or in the in the in the thing that uh, we were getting a four hundred four on NathanTheCaveman.com. Is that right, Mike? Did you check? No, that I at fixed all? it. I I don't know whether because it's probably a an outlinking from um uh, Facebook linking. Oh, they might not so, let you link in chat rooms right. because then you're so, you might be spamming or something. I I just I I took the actual link from Kickstarter and posted it. So if anyone clicks on it now, they'll see it and it'll okay, it'll update yep. itself. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, it so, looks like it's working now. Yeah. So, so go to NathanTheCaveman.com to see all the good Nathan the Caveman stuff. Uh, make sure you check out Ben Bishop's uh, webpage, and that is Bish Art, right? B i s h a r t. dot com. Dot net. Dot net, dot net, dot net. Yep. Um, I'll, and, <laughs> what's that? I'll I'll change I'll change ever or I'll add stuff uh, when we when we finish up I'll add stuff to and have it pinned to the cool. comments still. Cool. And, yeah. It. And look, go get one of these giant books. It's three hundred yeah. pages. It's worth it. Uh, you can get it for only twenty bucks. I'll no. I'm, as soon as we stop, I'm throwing my money at you. No. Spin oh, good. The I, was, I was talking to talking to the audience more than pressuring you. No, I know they want to. No, ben, they want to spin the sixty because they want to get the print. They want to get the 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 hand printed print from you. The fifth grade yeah. putting your hand on the. No, I'm just kidding. That's but, right. <laughs> Hey, have you thought about doing any of the ones where they put the thing up and they blow the die on the ha on the hand so you get the outside of the hand? Sounds like a great idea. I'll do uh, that. I like, yeah, they 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 do some kind of I forget. They they would get like 
I forget how you say it, oak, oak sure powder or whatever it was, <laughs> but it was like a powder. It was like a dye powder. Um, and I don't know if they like wet the surface first or what. I mean, you could play with it. You're an artist. But the, the caveman, they would put their hand up and they would blow the, the powder through the straw. And that's where you got that negative, the negative hands that you yeah. see. That's how they that's do really those. Cool. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I've seen those. Um, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how it holds up after all this time either. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, that's good. That's cool stuff. I always thought about getting a tattoo of, of, of one of the cave paintings on me because I got, you know, I got a couple tattoos myself and I thought about maybe getting a caveman tattoo. Hey, I could do that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. All right, everybody. Go back. Ben's, uh, Ben's Kickstarter. And uh, let's do let's let's do the close out. Uh, I got to get here and then here. Thanks Wait, Mike, I, I I got to do the part where I go here, here, right? Thank you for coming on. We appreciate <laughs> oh, yes. it. Thanks for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. All right. You've just enjoyed Kicking It with the Mythwits. Make sure to catch our regular live show on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can cast, you can ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, Make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher, or you can listen at mythwits.podbean.com. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out tsrpn.com for more cool shows. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't smash it with a rock and drag it off by its hair. Make sure but to share it. Share the Kickwits episodes. Share so the that, kickwits all you yeah. want Definitely make sure to the kick check out studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list thanks everybody for checking this out and if you're actually watching the credits then don't kid yourself you want this book go back that puppy right now nathan the caveman on kickstarter right mike yes all right everybody